All right. So um, the other factor, the other thing to include in here is this ideal org strategy that's going on right now. Uh, this has been going on since like 2003 or so, where Miscavige has ordered that all the churches buy big, great big new buildings in order to be a true reflection of Scientology and the quality of Scientology. And he didn't want to see folding tables and folding chairs and crickety carpets with holes in it and, carpet and coffee stains and all this kind of thing. Uh, that were what churches of Scientology looked like for the most part. They looked like run down, beat up places. Uh, that were not doing so great financially because they weren't, uh, you know, because all the money goes straight up the line. It doesn't get distributed back down to these churches to make themselves posh and nice and, and, uh, and inviting. Um, despite all that, they were still bringing new people in and they were still doing, you know, some business. Well, the ideal org strategy was the idea to, great, to, to raise all of these orgs up uh, in terms of the quality of their presentation uh, with uniform staff, great big buildings, renovated at great expense. And, uh, but there were some other factors involved in this behind the scenes that I don't know everybody is particularly up to speed on. One of those is that when you, uh, one of the big problems that we had when I was a manager for the Western United States is that the churches, that before they went ideal, before this whole thing existed, uh, were renting or leasing their quarters and they would fall behind on their rent all the time. And this was a huge problem for us in management because the policy was orgs don't close. You know, they can't fail and go in and not into unexistence and we're just going to let them close their doors. Absolutely not. No way could that be allowed to occur. So we would have from a management, continental management level, would have to pony up the money from our reserves to pay their rent or their backlogged lease payments and keep them in those quarters and then kick their asses to make some money and get the thing going so that they could keep the doors open and pay their bills. This was an ongoing, continuous problem for us with many of the smaller failing churches around the Western United States, namely Hawaii, Albuquerque, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, I mean these tiny podunk little places. Uh, when I first got in to, to the Sea Org in, uh, back in 95, the very first project I ever was ever sent out on to Kansas, was to Kansas City to make money so that they would not be kicked out of their building, right? We had to, as Sea Org members, we had to go in there and drive around and, and, and you know, sell people Scientology, reg them is the Scientology term. We had to reg a lot of people uh, in the Kansas City area to keep those doors open because the staff in Kansas City wasn't getting the job done. So that is, and that was just a, a you know, a, a continuing problem and story for us. When the ideal org strategy was announced and they started, you know, doing fundraising to buy buildings, that was a huge weight off management's shoulders because now when they buy the building, they don't have to pay rent on it anymore or a lease payment to a non-Scientology landlord. And, uh, and then there is no rent. The, the orgs, in the ideal orgs, as far as I know, they don't pay rent payments to the Church of Scientology International. All they have to do, once, they're, once they've got their building, they've fundraised the millions of dollars to buy it and renovate it, all they got to do at that point is keep the doors open, pay the utilities. That's it. They don't have to do anything else to keep that building. There's no property taxes. There's no income taxes through the tax exemption. So the operating costs of these big buildings are actually kind of low and they don't have to pay their staff. So, you know, payroll is, is kind of a breeze, right? It's nice when they get it and they've, and they've played around with the percentages that the staff get in order to try to give them, you know, a little bit more money here and there, but that goes in and out and up and down. And, and if the org is not making any money, then they're not going to, then it doesn't matter. You know, 50% of zero is still zero, right? So if they're not making any money, then they're not going to be able to pay their staff. But they only need to make a few thousand bucks a week in order to pay the heating bill or cool, you know, or the air conditioner and the electricity and, and maybe, you know, the toilet paper and that sort of thing and, and keep the place going. So that was kind of, you know, what, that was a big problem that has been being solved with this ideal org program. Um, this also, though, removes the necessity of the staff to make money to keep the rent payments 
paid and that sort of thing. And so the staff, you know, are, uh, from what I'm, what I'm hearing these days, um, the staff are pretty demoralized in a lot of these ideal orgs because there's a, it's a double-edged sword, right? Like now they don't have to pay rent or leases or anything like that, and they only have to keep the operations costs going. But the promise of the ideal org strategy was if you build it, they will come. So they thought all these staff and the public who paid over all these millions of dollars over the last 10, 15 years for these buildings were promised the sun, the moon, and the stars with these ideal orgs. And yet what happens is they open them with great fanfare and then nobody comes in. Nobody's walking in the door. They're not booming. They're not, you know, packed course rooms and packed auditing rooms. Nah, that's a fantasy. And so the staff and the public are now seeing that that's the reality and they are demoralized and they are leaving as a result. And so it's, you know, so it's shrinking. So it was a, it was a good, and a, you know, as far as operations costs go, it was a good move. As far as the staff morale goes and as far as the public morale goes, you know, not so much. Um,